Hi, everybody. It's Tamara from Moogly, and I'm super excited to be joining you today for a Yarnspirations Lunch and Learn. We're going into the woods with the Red Heart Into the Woods Mobius. It's a pattern I designed for Red Heart a little while back. Hit the wrong season, had to wait for fall to come back. But now we get to take another look at this gorgeous pattern, get it up there for all of you, and I get to demonstrate some of the trickier bits for you here today live. So since I'm live, I'm going to take just a moment and hit a couple buttons here on my laptop so I can follow along and see your comments and questions as we go. So hi, Julia. Hi, your inspirations team. Hi, everybody who's joining us today. So now, as I mentioned, I designed this pattern for your inspirations. So I took a couple pictures before I sent it off, but I had to send off the finished Mobius so they could put it on their beautiful model. So I don't have the actual Mobius to show you anymore, but of course I have the pattern that all of you can get now too. And here it is. This is the Red Heart Into the Woods Mobius. Here you can see what it looks like laid flat, not on the gorgeous model, um, but it is a simple Mobius. We start with the gray, then the pink, and we finish up with the green. Mink, clay, and khaki. You can see those colors ooh, right there specifically. And as I said, your inspirations, if they haven't already, we'll be definitely dropping the link to this pattern in the chat here if you are watching live. If you're watching afterwards, check around where you find the description and the link will be there as well. So we are going to be making this pattern today. As I mentioned, it uses Red Heart Super Saver Brushed. This is a fantastic take on Red Heart Super Saver. If you guys haven't had a chance to try this one out yet, Look for it in your store and just give it a feel and see what you think. It has a totally different feel than Red Heart Super Saver that you know and love before. You can see just how much fuzzier it is, and it makes it so soft and just gives it a really lovely hand, but it's still super easy care, just like Red Heart Super Saver. So let's go ahead and switch to the hand camera and get started on our Mobius. All right. Let's see here. Okay, there's always that little delay. I just have to make sure it went through. Okay, so now we can see here is our pattern again. And in addition to three colors, you can use, of course, whichever colors you like of Red Heart Super Saver Brushed, you also need a USL 8 millimeter crochet hook. That's the gauge. Gauge isn't super important for this one, but you want a nice flowy fabric. That's really the main thing. Now, I want to point out a couple things on the pattern. In addition to the written instruction, there is also a chart, which is really wonderful for a pattern like this. Not sure if the chart for setting up the Mobius is super helpful, but I think this section is going to be great for following along with the pattern and answering any questions that aren't answered by the written instructions. But let's go ahead and dive on in. So I'm going to start, I'm going to do these colors a little out of order today. The changing colors in this pattern is simply the simplest way you've changed colors for anything else. You break off the one color, finish it up, put on the new color and start crocheting again. So odds are you know how to do that part, but I want to cover, like I say, the trickier bits. So the first thing we do in this pattern is we foundation double crochet 90 stitches. So let's go over the foundation double crochet right now and get that out of the screen there just a little bit. Okay, so to make the foundation double crochet, I come in several inches from the end of my yarn, and then I go ahead and make my slip stitch. I always like to leave a good four to six, sometimes eight inches on the thicker yarns for weaving in my ends. There we go. And then I chain two, one, two, and then I'm going to yarn over and insert my hook in the furthest chain from the hook. Let me see if I can pull that just a little bit closer here to the camera. So this is the stitch right there that I want to go into, the one that's furthest away from my hook, the first one I made. So I'm gonna go right in there, yarn over and pull up a loop. Now I have three loops left on my hook. I have my active loop, my yarn over, and the loop I just pulled up and through. So then I'm going to yarn over and pull through just that first loop. Now that loop right there that we just pulled through will become the chain at the bottom of our first double crochet. So now we finish the double crochet. We yarn over and pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two. So there's our first one. To make the rest of the foundation double crochets, we yarn over, we find those two loops at the bottom of the previous stitch. So if I flip it over, you can see right there, there's two loops that you can go under. We yarn over and pull up our loop through there. Now we've got our active loop, our yarn over, and our new loop, which will become the chain at the bottom of this stitch. Up a little bit more yarn here from my skein. There we are. 
It can be center pull, just like Red Heart Super Saver, but it's got a little fuzz on it. So sometimes you have to give it a little tug. So to finish this one, we yarn over and pull a loop up through just that first loop and then finish the double crochet. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over and pull through two. Let's do that once more. Yarn over, find the two loops at the bottom of the previous stitch. So we just kind of flip it over. You can see it looks just like I'm going under two loops at the bottom of a top of a stitch, but now we're doing it at the bottom. Yarn over, pull up our loop. That will become our new chain. So what do we do when we work into the chain for a double crochet? We yarn over and pull up a loop. Then we finish our double crochet. Yarn over and pull through two. And yarn over and pull through two. So that is how to make the foundation double crochet. And for this pattern, you want to make a total of 90 of them. Now, this is a lunch and learn, so I don't have all day. So we're gonna go ahead and set this little one aside and switch over to this one that I made yesterday. This is, as you can see, still a bit shorter than 90, but it's going to give us a good sample to practice putting together our Mobius with. So here you can see, I've got all my stitches made. It's a multiple of four. I have put a stitch marker in the top of the very first foundation crochet, crochet stitch that we made right there, the very first foundation double crochet. So you can see there's our end, our slip knot, stitch marker in our very first stitch. So I'm gonna come down here, take out the stitch marker that I had securing my active loop. And this is where we turn just a regular line of crochet into a Mobius. So I've got my hook in my active loop and I'm going to pull it around. Now, if I were to make a hat or a cowl or something where I wanted to join a row of foundation double crochet, I would lay it out like this because I'm right-handed. It would be the other way if you were left-handed. And then I wanna carefully bring it together without a twist, right? Well, the thing with the Mobius is we're trying to put a twist in there. So that's where it's really handy to have that stitch marker. We're going to bring it together without a twist and then flip this end over. Now the uh, slip knot, our cut end, our first end of our yarn is on top and we have the bottom of our foundation double crochet right there. What we're going to do now is yarn over and go right into the bottom of that first stitch for a standard double crochet. And this is where having made foundation stitches comes in really handy because as we work into the bottom of those stitches, you can see we've got those two loops again and it looks just like working into the top of a stitch. So now we've made our first double crochet into the bottom of that first stitch and we continue working all the way around. We just double crochet in each one of these stitches, but it's into the bottom of the stitch. Let me see if I can pull that just a little closer here. This one is the pink color, which I believe is the clay. Yes, pull up a little bit more yarn here. All right. And then we continue on around with a double crochet in the bottom of each of those stitches. You can see why I didn't make this 90 for our little demonstration today, but you wanna have a full 90 stitches before you start crocheting into the bottom. The funny thing about a Mobius is you kind of go around your project twice in each row or round. When we think of a round, we think usually of going around the project only once, but because the Mobius has this special shape, you'll actually go all the way around twice every time. That's how we're able to kind of create that center out look. We start with whichever color we wanna start with, our color A will be in the middle of our cowl and our last color will be on both the top and the bottom. So I wanted to get enough on here so that we could see the Mobius, but it is just gonna take me a minute to work my way around, putting a single, or excuse me, a double crochet in each one. Let's see here, pull up a little bit more yarn. Isn't that pretty? Look at that beautiful fuzz. It's just so soft to the touch. And it makes for quite a warm fabric as well. So this Mobius, although not this first round, but the rest of it can be a little bit lacy, but it really does keep you quite warm. Um, when I was playing with it before I had to send it off, I really enjoyed wearing it. So we're gonna just continue double crocheting around. And like I say, so it might seem like really long rounds when you're making a Mobius, but remember you're going around twice. So really each, each round is giving you twice the real estate. Going on around here. 
We are almost there. You can see we're coming up to where we did that first flip. And right now it still looks kind of flat in a way. But we're going to turn it into a Mobius here with our final join for this round. So I'll make just these next few stitches here. There we go. And we just want to make sure to double crochet into the bottom of each one of these double crochets. Some more yarn here. There we go. And look closely. It looks like we've got two more here. So there's one. And then one more. That last one wants to hide from me a little bit here. We'll get in there yet. All righty. So there we go. Now we have double crocheted in the bottom of each one of those double crochets we made before. You can see if I lay it out flat, it still looks flat, right? It's crazy, but it could still be some weird sort of brim or something. We could just keep working around, but we don't want to do that. We want to turn it into our Mobius, so we have to introduce that twist. So we've got that marked stitch, flip it back up, and then join with a slip stitch to that marked stitch. So let me lay that out again so we can see how that works. You can see we've now gone around into the bottom of each of those stitches. We're going to flip it up again, get that little end out of the way there, and now we slip stitch to that marked stitch. If it wants to let me, the slip stitch one, or the, excuse me, the stitch marker wants to be in the way, so I'm gonna move that out of the way there. And do our slip stitch. There we go, and now you can see we've introduced a twist into our fabric. And that is what makes it a Mobius. We will always have that twist in it. And as we continue to crochet around, you can see we start here. There's our active loop. We would go into all of these stitches. And then we continue into all of these stitches until we end up right back where we were. But in that, you're going to travel around that twice. So that is going to leave a little gap right here. You can see in the middle of our Mobius. Well, that's what our beginning end is for. That's why we want to leave at least four to six inches. It's not just for weaving end. We're going to take that end and we can use our yarn needle to just cinch it up to the bottom of that stitch right there. So you can close that up when you go to weave in your ends and that hole just goes away. So then you can just continue on with the pattern. The pattern, again, I saw someone asking, is the Red Heart Into the Woods Mobius? But this is a great way to start any Mobius. If you want to start your own project with Red Heart Super Saver, you could do this and then just kind of make up some stitches as you go. Now, you might find after doing this, this always happens to me, I end up with my yarn sort of running through that loop. But we can just turn it the other way around. Get that out of there if your yarn starts to get caught up in it until you've got it all straightened out just like so. So after that, we follow the rest of the pattern. And the rest of the pattern is just interesting stitches, but they're pretty much double crochets and variations on it worked in the round. So if you come over here to our chart. Now, like I said, this part, I'm not sure. <laughs> I think I think I as an experienced crocheter, this would probably confuse me a little bit, but it does show how to create the Mobius there with the chart. And then after that, as you can see, it's primarily double crochet and half double crochet stitches. And there's some post stitches and we've got some wrapped stitches that you can see those right here. Let me pull that a little bit closer. Make sure we've got it good and centered here. Um, but it's round six. And then again, I believe round 13 right there. You can see how those symbols sort of swoop around. So that's the kind that's the, sort of an unusual move. Like I say, the rest of the stitches are kind of standard stitches you've probably done before, post stitches, double crochets, double crochet two together. But these wrap stitches are a little bit unusual. So I'm going to demonstrate that one right now. Now, as I say, we don't do this in the pattern until round six. But again, sake of time, we only have lunch together. Let's go ahead and jump right on in to round six right now. Let me get to the right page here on my instructions. So I can make sure to start it off just right. Okay, so for round six, we start with a chain of three. One, two, three. And then we work one double crochet in each of the next two stitches. 
So that means that first double crochet, or excuse me, that first chain three is going to count as our first double crochet. So then we double crochet in the next two. So there's one and two. And then this is, it's kind of phrased funny, and that's why I wanted to show this one. We work a front double crochet front post around the posts of the two double crochet stitches we just made. It's a mouthful, but it's pretty simple. What we do is we yarn over, and as you can see, those are the two posts we just made. We're just going to put our hook right on the side of that first one, come around to the back, wrap our yarn around the front, yarn over and pull it all the way around here to the sides of those stitches. So we're working this direction. We want to pull that yarn all the way around and then finish our double crochet, just like that. So that is, it's kind of like a post stitch because you're going around the posts, but it's also known as a wrapped stitch. Let's do that a couple more times because in this pattern, that's what we do all the way around for round six. After we do that front post to double crochet or double crochet around those posts, then we want to make sure to skip the next stitch because we work that stitch here and we don't want to increase. So we skip the next stitch and then we double crochet in the next three, I believe. Let me just double check my instructions. Yes, we double crochet around, excuse me, uh, yes, the round, in the next three. So there's one, two, and three. And then we double crochet around the two stitches that we just most recently made. So double crochet three, double crochet around the last two. So we go in between that first and second, yarn over and pull that loop all the way around those stitches. I like to just turn my work. It's a little easier for me to do it from this direction. And then we finish our double crochet. Make sure to skip the next stitch and let's do it again. Double crochet in the next three. One, keep running out of yarn. Let me pull up a whole bunch more here. There we go. So there's one and then two and then three and then double crochet around those last two. So we put our hook right between the first and second, wrap the yarn around the side of the stitches and pull our loop up and through here and then double crochet. We just finish off the double crochet, yarn over and pull through two and yarn over and pull through two. So you can see the really neat stitch pattern that this creates, it just creates a whole different look. But again, it's just double crochets. So that's one of the fun things about crochet, right? You can do all these really amazing stitch patterns with the same simple stitches. So then of course, we wanna make sure to skip the next one and double crochet in the next three. So there's one, two, three, double crochet around those last two. And then of course, make sure to skip the next one. One, two, and three, and double crochet around the last two. Oops, there we go. So, like I say, it sounds really complicated, but it's actually a very simple stitch, and it gives a really lovely look. Now, you can see I'm working my way around. Let's continue on with this stitch, since it is probably the only really tricky stitch besides the foundation double crochet and setting up the Mobius that we've got. Let's continue it around so we can see how this Mobius develops. There's one, two, and three, and double crochet around the last two. Skip the next one. One, two, and three, and double crochet around the last two. Skip the next one. And you can see by the little tail end here, still hanging out, that we are approaching what would normally be the end of the round. But if we've set up our Mobius correctly, we can just keep going. Some more yarn here. So we've got our three double crochets. Double crochet around the last two. Skip the next one. One, 
One, two, three, double crochet around the last two. And now you can see we're passing that point right there of our Mobius, so to speak, that joining point. And yet we've still got more stitches to crochet into. And now you can see those wrap stitches we're making, we're making, excuse me, are on the bottom of our fabric. More proof that our Mobius is set up correctly. When we've gone all the way around it twice, that's when we will have finished round two. There we go. Get that straightened back out. So here's our three. And we wrap our stitch. There we go. And then we skip the next one. So you can see on our little sample here how we're just traveling all the way around and we're going to come back to that same point if we just keep going. So right there, I've got those three. And if we just keep going right along this line, then we'll be presented right there as we come around with that very first stitch of this round. We can join right to the top of that chain three. But you can see. There's always going to be that twist right there in the fabric that lets us grow from the center on out. So, yes, thank you so much, Julia and Cynthia. I'm so glad you guys enjoyed the demonstration of the wrap stitch. It's one of my favorite ways to add a little bit of extra texture and interest with a double crochet stitch. Um, not very difficult, like I say, but it creates a really neat lace pattern. Most of the other stitches in here, as I say, are just double crochets or half double crochets, post stitches. Um, we do a little bit of decreasing right there, but we're really just repeating those rows. And as we work out, we want to make sure to change colors. So we'll change colors on, it would be after round three. And then again, it's going to be in here somewhere <laughs> at the end of, it looks like round 10 right there, break B. So we only have to change colors twice, but because of the way the Mobius is made, if we come back here to the picture, now that you've seen it in action, you can see I did those first three rounds in the gray, and that created the center stripe. Then we switched to the pink, and then we switched to the green. So we'll end up, again, with whatever we do, we'll be on both sides of your fabric. So that is how I put together a Mobius. Now, some mathematicians may call this a little bit of a cheat, that this isn't the true way you're supposed to put together a Mobius. But I think it's a really simple and approachable way, and it certainly works in crochet. Um, and it creates that great twist right there. So let's go ahead and see how much further we can get in this round. And I will go ahead and check your comments. So thank you so much, Karen and Judy. I'm so glad you guys like the pattern. We can get that picture back in there so you guys can see it here while I scroll through. Um, be sure to check the comments here. Your Inspirations has tons of beautiful fall accessories that you can try out. And yes, the wrap stitches and the Mobius are just a really fun way to add some more interest. So if you are just working on a simple scarf or something like that, and you've learned the double crochet stitch, throw in some of these wrap stitches for a row or two. You're going to create a whole new look just using the same stitches you already know and love. So we're going to just continue on around here. If you guys have any questions about it, please do let me know. I'll try and answer them here while we're still live. If not, leave them in the comments. We'll try to answer them afterwards. Um, you will be able to watch a replay of this. So thank you so much for asking. And let's see. I'm just scrolling through the comments here. So yay. Uh, somebody asked, could I use a standing stitch instead of doing the chain three? You absolutely could. You absolutely could for this one. Um, that's a trick I like to use a lot on my... Um, on my blog, when I write for other publications like Your Inspirations, I try and keep it a little more often to some of the standard stuff, but I do love my tricks. So if you wanted to use a double crochet substitute instead of the chain three in this pattern, you absolutely could. It's whatever you like to use. There we go. And oh, thank you so much to Your Inspirations. I want to be sure to point this out. At this moment, as of September 20th, they have a giveaway going on for this yarn to make this pattern on Yarn Inspiration's Instagram. So do check that out. I'm not sure exactly how long it's running, but you can go to Yarn Inspiration's Instagram, look for this beautiful photo of this lovely lady, and you could win the yarn to make this pattern. And again, that's Red Heart Super Saver Brushed. Love it, love it, love it. Just a fabulous new yarn to check out. So you can see here on our little sample, I'm almost all the way around with this particular stitch. 
And you can see we've done, this is only the second row that I've actually crocheted. And you can see how quickly this grows too. Sure, you're going around twice, but when you say, well, gosh, I've only made two rows, but it's really four rows of crochet. So I do love that. It's just a really fun, fun way to make a new project. So, and of course you can make them any size you like. Once you know the technique, you can play with your stitches and just have a lot of fun. So, oh, and thank you. I wanted to point out, thank you to your inspirations. It's not your inspirations Instagram. It's the Red Heart Instagram. Sorry about that, guys. All righty. So there's one. Now, I didn't count this out to make sure that the multiple would work with this particular um, sample size. So I've got this little bit wrong number here, but we're going to pretend. We're going to pretend that we skip the last stitch and simply slip stitch to the top of that chain three or whatever double crochet substitute you want to make. You can see, let me pull that back out. Even with that twist, after we've worked all the way around, you should have that first stitch of your row at the end that you can join to, whatever it was. There we go. Let me see if I can get that in the top of the chain three. This is the reasons we love those double crochet substitutes, right? There we go. All right, there's that slip stitch. All right, so now we can see. We have gone all the way around. We've really only crocheted two rounds, but we've got four rounds of crochet right there. And our first two are in the middle and we're just building out as we go. So we've got this really lovely twist. So one thing, another thing I wanna point out about Mobius is, is that at any given time, you're going to be looking at both the front and the back of the stitch, just the way it works around. So you wanna make sure if you are working on your own Mobius or adding some stitches that you love to pick some stitches that are going to look great from both sides. You can see that, I think, a little more clearly, actually, right here. You can see um, this right here would be the, the quote-unquote right side of the stitching, and this one is the quote-unquote wrong side. But again, I want to make sure to use stitches that look beautiful from both sides. So if you decide to play with your own Mobius, that is something to keep in mind as well. So let's go ahead and come back to the other uh, camera here. I want to thank you guys so much for joining me today. I hope you will check out the Red Heart Into the Woods Mobius, as well as this gorgeous Red Heart Super Saver brushed. I use these really woodsy colors, hence the name, right? Gotta, I gotta have some basis for the name. Um, but you can use so many, there's so many great colors of this yarn. And of course, if you're not into the brush texture, regular Red Heart Super Saver is a great substitute. Um, if you like your, your stitches a little more crisp, that is a great way to go. Um, but otherwise, definitely check out that pattern. Be sure to check the links. And I will see you next time for a Yarn Inspirations Lunch and Learn. Have a great day, everybody.